Is it actually helpful to change your phone, computer, email, browser, etc. language to a language that you're trying to learn? Let's find out. Hi guys, my name's Lamont and this channel is called Days of French and Swedish, but it is about learning any and all languages. So if you're interested in learning a language, make sure to hang around and subscribe. I'm sure you know how YouTube works, unless you're new to YouTube, in which case, Welcome to YouTube. Now, when we first start learning a foreign language, a lot of people try to get as much comfortable exposure to that language as possible. Not many people will gravitate towards, say, reading a book or just watching a movie without subtitles in that language because for most people, that's beyond comfortable. It would be extremely painful. Something that a lot of people do decide is a good idea is to set the language of something they use frequently, like their phone or their PC, to the target language. Now to avoid saying target language like 50 times in this video, I'm just gonna say Swedish every time and I'm gonna say it like that every time so get used to it. Jokes, I'm just gonna say Swedish every time but just put whatever language you're trying to learn in there. But the question here is, does this even do anything? Is it in fact helpful? Now the obvious answer is, of course. But as someone with significant experience in setting various devices I have into Swedish and then changing them back again and then changing them back again for different reasons, I can tell you that it's not quite as simple as all that. Numbers and dates and numbers and numbers and dates. We need to define what helpful actually means. When we think of helpful, we tend to think of, of any benefit. But what helpful actually means is of more benefit than an alternative activity. Let's imagine that you're trying to get into good physical shape and you've got two hours to work out every day. Now your gym is a one hour run away or a 10 minute drive. So when deciding whether to run or drive to the gym, you would need to consider that obviously, yes, a one hour run will be good for you in one way, but will it be better for you than that extra 50 minutes spent at the gym. Now I've used a deliberately tricky example here. Obviously to decide this we would need to know exactly what kind of physical shape you were trying to get in. So you might think that this example isn't really analogous to setting a certain device into Swedish because you might assume that that doesn't take any longer so you would therefore only be getting the benefit of that. But I would argue that this is actually a little bit of a catch-22. For a lower level student and certainly for a beginner, a lot of mundane tasks that you want to spend as little time as possible on will either take considerably longer or be more mental strain. Or if they're taking the same amount of time, then you've probably just learnt that certain words or certain icons lead to a certain result. You're probably not actually engaging with the language or taking it in in any way and therefore you're not actually getting anything out of it. I'm not saying that I don't think this is of any use ever at all. I have almost every device that will allow it set to Swedish. I'm just saying that I think a lot of people, especially at lower levels, do this quite mindlessly without actually thinking about whether it's beneficial or they spend a significant amount of mental energy engaging with words like storage and cloud when they could just be learning like 20 phrases that are used in 90% of conversations. That's why I started this internet dating. And this brings me to the second thing that we need to consider, which is whether the input that you get from doing this is even valuable. And once again, this is actually more complicated than you might think, because you might imagine that if you wanted to become, say, a chef in Sweden, and you didn't mind if you spoke English everywhere except for at work, then you're probably not going to care about the language used on a PC or a Mac OS or on your phone, because you'd assume that tech language is unrelated. But when you really consider what tech language is, it's actually just a random assortment of normal language in a text setting. Cloud, cookies, bookmark, window, firewall, etc. And the other thing about technology is that it often uses words in a very literal sense that can help people, particularly more advanced students, to get a better understanding of the metaphorical sense of that word. For example, the Swedish word used for digital space reserved for a certain function, e.g. the comments section, is Felt. And if you set your browser or a website to Swedish, then you'll see this word quite a lot. 
but that word comes from a much less frequently used word which is field as in she's an expert in her field. Now this is going to be hard to remember because it's fairly intangible and as I said it doesn't come up very much but if you're always seeing felt as in kommentarsch feltet the comments section then it's going to be a lot easier to remember that. So how do we decide whether it's actually worth it, whether it's a good idea to set one or more of our devices to Swedish. The first thing to consider is what you're trying to do and how much time you have to spend in the target language. If you have like many hours per day, then it doesn't really matter if you spend a few minutes trying to work out what tabot kakona means. It also means that you will have time to learn all these words actively. That is to use something like Anki to drill what this stuff actually means. But if you only have about an hour a day, it may not be worth it to waste a few minutes extra on your browser or your phone or Instagram language or anything like that and just spend that extra time doing whatever activity is most helpful to you at that time, whether that's reading kids material or listening to an audiobook on repeat. If you're not going to use some kind of spaced repetition or word lists and you're just relying on learning this passively, then you want to consider first if you understand at least half of the words you're seeing. Even if you don't understand exactly how they're being used, you should be looking for about 50% recognition of words. If you do have that, then I think you can slowly build up your comprehension of these words without wasting too much of your time alongside actually learning the language until it's definitely unconditionally useful. And the last thing to consider is whether having set something to the language actually helps you to engage with that language or whether you've just memorized that clicking a certain button leads to a certain outcome. For example, when I click whatever the hell this is, it reacts like this. Just knowing that in English this button should say manage permissions doesn't improve my Swedish. When you see something like this, you want to consider whether this is something you might have come across before. I'm familiar with hantera and I know what behörig means, but I've never seen behörig heter. And since I can work out what this setting does anyway, by reading its full title, I have actually advanced my competence. Now these are very general principles I'm applying here. There are obviously exceptions all over the place because it really depends on a combination of you, your level, your tolerance for discomfort and your target level in the language. So to give you a better idea of how I make decisions as to what I do and don't set in Swedish, I'm just going to go through a few examples now. My PC has recently made the changeover to Swedish for good because when I first attempted it a few years ago, it wasn't comprehensible input and I wasn't going out of my way to learn these words. So most of it just looked like gibberish and it didn't actually help my Swedish. Bear in mind that changing your operating system language won't just change little things like new folder and rename folder, but longer notification messages like your antivirus is about to expire, do you want to renew, etc. If you're a PC user, it also changes those little descriptions of various landmarks and photos from around the world that you get when you turn your computer on. I really like this now and I've taken to reading these out loud and often I visit the website that it comes from and then read the whole article out loud. On top of that, you can assume that basically any device, website or program that I use regularly is set to Swedish, the YouTube Studio and Skype probably being the most beneficial ones because when I'm on Skype, I'm normally speaking Swedish, so that way I don't have to look at English words that kind of cue my brain to start up in English again. And the YouTube studio because it's just quite word heavy and quite complex. The overall benefit that I find at my level with setting almost everything I have to Swedish, even devices that don't actually say very much, that is they don't use very many words, is that it can keep my brain space in Swedish for longer. For example, if I've just spent two hours reading a book on my browser in Swedish and then I close two windows and it says you're closing two windows, do you want to continue? I'd rather see that in Swedish because I find it really does kick my brain back into English even just to read a single question like that. If you compare this with a beginner, they don't have the option of thinking in Swedish. You can't just switch your brain into a different language when you don't have the basis to do so. So the best that setting everything into Swedish will do is maybe teach them a few words, yes, but unless they're immersing for like four hours a day, it's probably not even the most efficient way to learn those words. The one voluntary exception that I make to Swedish is the Adobe Creative Suite, which for me is mostly Premiere Pro and Photoshop. 
Both of these are extremely in-depth programs with literally thousands of options and effects. And both of them take hours longer if you don't know what you're doing or you don't know what you're looking for. In a constant effort to make my videos better, comment and subscribe. I'm frequently Googling how to make certain effects, how to do certain things, and the results are obviously in English. Well, actually sometimes they're in Hindi. But what I'm getting at is that the 20 to 50 Swedish words that I might learn from doing this is nowhere near worth the extra time that it would take me to look for those same effects when they have different titles and those kinds of things. It's actually worth it to just get the video out faster and spend the leftover time immersing in Swedish. So guys, I hope that's given you an insight into whether setting stuff into your target language is actually right for you. I feel like a lot of people just assume that it can't be bad. And while that is sort of true, it can be extremely inefficient. And when you're trying to learn a language, inefficiency is not what you want. Now, if you like this, you can do any and all of three things. Subscribe if you haven't already, leave me a comment and go and watch this video, damn Okay, it took me three freaking weeks to make. It's really good if I do say so myself and none of you watched it. Fifa, shan't you?